Islam, everybody. It's Tom Array, L D I B. Back with another episode of these little Morris Debris. With another segment of Dispelling Red Herring. Today, we're going to deal with another red heron that has been ripping our nation apart and uh, it's been doing that for quite some time now just like the other two I discussed in part one and two this is the third part and today we're going to be dealing with uh, nationality, uh, nationalization, as opposed to naturalization. Were we supposed to be naturalized? Or are we supposed to be nationals? Are we supposed to be nationalized? So today I'm going to dig into it. And we're going to try to get some understanding. Again, inshallah. Okay, let's start this. So we're going to start. I'm reading from the... Uh, Citizenship of the United States Expatriation Act of 1907. Well, 1906, but it was published in 1907. All right. And uh, right now, I think this little short, I want to say maybe five paragraphs, is it? Maybe about 10 paragraphs all together, but it's short nonetheless. But it's so revealing, and we're going to deal with what it reveals, okay? So let's get into it. This is Mr. Phillips. The charge the affairs to the Mr. Root, Secretary of State, August 3rd, 1906, at the American Legation, Tangier. August 3rd, 1906. Sir, there are, strictly speaking, no Moroccan laws relating to citizenship of Moorish subjects in Morocco. Now, this is the Citizenship of the United States Expatriation Act. So, don't get it twisted. They talking about the so-called United States when they're talking, but they talking about we the people. So check it out. Start from the beginning again. Sir, there are strictly speaking no Moroccan laws rec relating to citizenship of Moorish subjects in Morocco. The fundamental laws of this non Christian country are based entirely upon the Islamic code no part of which treats of the subject of citizenship. There are, however, numerous treaties and conventions between the various Christian countries, Europe, and the Moorish Empire by means of which citizenship in this country is defined. 
So they telling you citizenship by in this country is defined by the treaties between the Christian countries and the Moorish Empire. That's the only way you're going to be a citizen in this country. And you're going to find that Moors as nationals we we are citizens of the US. We are subjects of Morocco. We are nationals of the US. But nonetheless I'll continue to read. But as I understand from the above acknowledged instructions, so they instructed them that it is not the desire of the department to call for a report upon such lines. So they're telling you, hey, we don't want to get deep into it. I just told y'all enough. We don't want to get deep into it, but I will therefore confine these remarks to general conditions existing, general conditions existing, which may possibly be of some use in connection with the information desired. So they had to break it down for the masses and not reveal too much of the truth but however they're going to give you enough of the truth where you can use in connection with the information desired to come up with your own conclusion to understand what's really going on I, I'm not making this up this is what they're saying when I read the words, what they say. Okay. So, number one, citizenship in Morocco may be said to be governed by the laws pertaining to the same in other countries, which the exception that all persons residing in Morocco who cannot prove foreign citizenship are protection are considered ipso jor as more subjects. See? Ipso jor as more subjects. Now, didn't I just say that we are not citizens of the United States? We are more subjects of Morocco. Right? So, what does ipso jor mean? Ipso jor means by the law itself, by the mere operation of law, which means these people who are more subjects are considered by the mere oper operation of law, by the law itself, more subjects right it means that these people are moors straight and direct straight and direct by the mere operation of law these people are moorish subjects that's what ipso jor means right by the mere operational law as more subject. Now, citizenship in Morocco may be said to be governed by the laws pertaining to the same in other countries, right? Meaning, like, that's a vague statement. But what they really saying, they really talking about common law. They're not talking about statutes, ordinance, codes. They're talking about common law. They have one common law for all nations on the planet. 
It's the law of nations. It's international law. One common law. So when they say that citizenship in Morocco may be said to be governed by the laws pertaining to the same in other countries, with the exception that all persons residing in Morocco and understand that the so-called U.S. is sitting on top of Morocco. This is Morocco, Moroccan dominions, right? Who can not prove foreign citizenship. So if you can't prove foreign citizenship, our protection are considered ipso jure as moral subject, right? So that's the whole reasoning into trying to, especially uh, Moors who was born and naturali naturalized, naturalized at birth with birth certificates and stuff like that. They try to hold you to that. When you do your name change and they try to hold you to that birth certificate and if you got and we made that contract for a social security card, man, they try to hold you to it because that's their way of proving that you have foreign citizenship. So they, in other words, the U.S. telling uh, the, the empire of Morocco, hey, they're not your subjects no more. They claim allegiance to us. They, they natural, they they naturalize, they naturalize with us. See, that's the only way you really can lose. You go, you you finna see, you finna see. I'm finna read it. But anyway, it said two and three. Morris subject lost their nationality. Only, what I was just about to say, by becoming naturalized in are protected by and in our case is both of them because we are naturalized in with the birth certificate and all that stuff are protected by because we don't have a, our own standing army here so the people that we created and gave the treaty, created the treaty and gave permission to go in commerce, they inevitably wind up creating a uh, army and armed forces and air force and navy and all these things. And by us having a treaty with them, you know what I'm saying, they are bound to protect us too. So we were naturalized, naturalized and protected by another country, quote unquote, corporation, having a treaty relation with the Moorish Empire. See, we had a treaty with them, but we, we laid our arms down too. And I think that's a huge, a grave mistake it was like, you know, we should have continued building our army as well as allow a lot them some land. I know a lot of people don't agree with uh, us even allowing them to come on this land, period. And I, I, I can feel those people, you know, knowing the, the real history and knowing what they did when we were kind of like just give them a little we'll give them a little land and they'll come back and take more you know and if you know the real history on the Louisiana purchase you know that they didn't purchase all that land they only purchased a few ports and barracks and places where they can transport the commerce because we couldn't stop them from doing commerce but really truth of the matter is they wasn't even supposed to set foot on that part of this land 
mass. They were supposed to be on the other side of the Appalachian Mountains where the 13 colonies were situated and they was also given access to the West Coast too. The West Coast was kind of wide open even though Moors on the West Coast was trying to set shut that down too. And that's kind of why things went the way it went because if you understand the history, you know Moors was over there fighting and trying to keep, uh, really fighting amongst each other, trying to keep their, their own Asiatic brothers off from entering on the West Coast side of the nation and you know, Horace Greeley and you know, those good old boys was over here on the east side of the nation saying, hey, go west, young man. You know? Go yes, go go west, young man. And I'm I'm from a part of the world that's called quote unquote New Orleans. Louisiana, right? And across the river, across the Mississippi River in Jefferson, quote unquote, parish, there's a little small city called Marrero. Marrero. Me understanding, you know, etymology and root words and, you know, I totally see the the Moor and Marrero, but maybe they'll have some people saying I'm stretching it, right? But right next to Marrero, traveling west, is a city called West We Go. Now, I know I ain't tripping on that shit. The city name is West we go. West we go. West we go. They spell the shit W E S T W E G O. West we go. And it's really telling you what I'm talking about. You know, that's the position that Europeans took. And it was like, hey, man, we going west. <laughs> You know, they understood that uh, Khalifa's vault was in, in California. California literally means Khalifa's vault. And that's where all uh, the Moors on this last landmass, you know what I'm saying, stored the gold. And they understood they was looking for that gold. So that's where they wanted to go. So that's why the, the whole story about the 49ers and they went found gold and they had a huge gold rush where the Europeans was going west to go find gold. They already knew the gold was there. They already knew it was there. They just wanted to find where we were hiding it at. That's what they wanted to find. Where are them darkies and you know they didn't say darkies where they hiding that gold at I need to get that you know so that's that's where your whole 49ers and all that that's where that come from really really for real for real you know what I'm saying but nonetheless they telling you that Morris subjects of Morocco lost their nationality only by becoming naturalized in what's naturalized? Nah, that's national. Naturalized to confer citizenship upon an alien to make a foreigner the same in respect 
to the rights and privileges as if he were a native citizen or subject. You see how they said citizen or subject? How they, matter of fact, let's read naturalized citizen. One who, being an alien by birth, has received citizenship under the laws of the state or nation. That sounds like Europeans to me. Matter of fact, I'm pretty sure Europeans had a big deal first, I believe in the 1700, I think it was 1790. Let's see. There you go, 1790. First time they did it. First statue in the United States, the first statue, listen to the verbiage, the first statue in the United States to codify naturalization law. Alternatively, known as the Nationality Act. You see how they using these words interchangeably? They, they can use them interchangeably, but when you read the definition of nat, uh, nationality, a national, you, you, you find out that a national, had, it, he encompasses more than a, a natural. Like a national is the subject, you know, it's bigger than being a citizen when you are national. You you not a citizen. You you bigger than a citizen. You more than a citizen, right? So the first statute in the United States to codify naturalization law, also alternately known as the Nationality Act, the Naturalization Act of 1790 restricted citizenship to quote unquote any alien being being a free white person who had been in the U.S. for two years in effect it left out indentured service slaves and most women right so they passed the Naturalization Act to any alien being a free white person, but they wasn't the free white person. They attached that status to themselves via this act. They attached that status to themselves via this act. They wasn't the free white person, and I can prove this. I can prove this, no doubt. No doubt we're gonna prove this. My computer running slow. But you already know. You already know. But you already know. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, man. Let's go. My computer running slow. But I'm ready to go. And you already know. And you already know. I hope y'all see what time it is, man. And I'm up making a video trying to enlighten people. But I know I will enlighten somebody. And I don't care if it's just one person. I do this for that one person. You know? I really do. Come on, man. My 
a few on the slope. It's not letting me click in here. Because I was, I was about to show that when you read the the definition of free white person, it tell you that that term it was uh, it have a it, it's a statement that was naturally given to the Europeans who uh, immigrated here with an E immigrated here you know via the act of I think it it, it, it uh, referenced 1860 when Ulysses Grant came back and added on to this really when they you know, it's on full throttle with the white thing but nonetheless it tell you that and then when you read further into the definition of a free white person it tell you Straight up, it does not mean Caucasian race. It does not mean Indo-European. You know, Aryan race. It, it does not mean that, right? It lets you know that. So, I don't know. Nonetheless, so let's let's go back and let's visit now, cause this day, this day two and three more subjects lost their nationality only by becoming naturalized and are protected by another country having treaty relations with the Moorish Empire. So let's look at nationality. They say we lost that. So they say we lost that quality or character which arises from the fact of a person belonging to a nation or state. They say that we lost we lost that only by being naturalized. So what they saying? They saying that we lost our nationality as Moorish Americans by being naturalized as U.S. citizens. A naturalized citizen. One, being an alien by birth. has received citizenship under the laws of a state or a nation. So this should make sense when you study the Dred Scott verdict and they tell Dred Scott that he is in error because you saying that you are a free black man by the name of Scott you in error because you are of quote unquote African descent and if you are from quote unquote African descent you could never be a U.S. citizen. So what are we going to do? We're going to act like you want. We're going to let you, let you believe that you want, but we're going to treat you different from anybody else that come here. Everybody else that come here can 
get the, the quality of character, the quality of character which arises from the fact of a person belonging to a nation. But you can't get that because the nation that you naturalized in made you undesirables, second and third class citizens. As a result, they passed the 14th Amendment and created the same status for you as a corporation. So now, McDonald's and a black person and a white person all share the same privileges and benefits. None of them have rights. All of the above, black, white, and corporations, all of them have pri privileges and benefits. None of them have rights. Nonetheless, nonetheless, naturalization, the act of adopting a foreigner and clothing him with the privileges of a citizen, of a, a native citizen. Now, when you read national, I already said the quality of character which arises from the fact of a person belonging to a nation or a state. Nationality determines the political status. It's all about status. Status is the first rule of law. Who are you? Put it on a record. What's your status? Of the, of the individual, especially with reference to allegiance. When you put your status on a record, when you put your nationality on a, on a record, that question becomes clear who you allegiance, who, who, what's your allegiance because you align with your nation. It, it, it's a no brainer. It's almost like, you know, if you, if you, part of the who that nation for example if just by saying you part of the new the who that nation the whole world know that hey they saints fan they who that nation that's how that works it ain't it's not even a guess you see what i'm saying this is stuff really simple if people think about it but they don't have a concept right so they don't really think about what's what's being said. It, it's, it's easy, right? While domicile determines his civil status, right? So your civil status, what they're telling you is nationality just, just determines your political status. That means you Moorish. Your nationality is Moorish. Your national status is Moorish. That's your national status. Your civil status is American. Therefore, you are Moorish American. Nationality arises either by birth or by naturalization. See, they putting it again. I told you earlier that they, they are linked. But one is should I say you're given the privileges and the rights of a nation of you're given the privileges you're given the rights of the national but you're not really the national you're not the, the heirs so therefore you're not supposed to have to say so the only reason why this is act this actually is not working the way it's supposed to be working is because 
We, the heirs, are so much sleep. We so sleep that we don't control our state. They have all different kind of tricks they play it on us to get us to, to look incompetent. And we are, we, we incompetent, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of us learning, and a lot of us trying to teach the rest of us who incompetent, but it's like, man, it's, it's real hard when people believe that they know when they believe that they've been given the real keys and clues to be free and successful. You know, a lot of these people, they correlate success with uh, material things, which, you know, ain't nothing wrong with having nice things. Ain't nothing wrong with having abundance. But that is not success. <laughs> success is happiness man being able to be happy wh in whatever condition you're in whether you rich or poor or, you know what I'm saying and wealth is not material things your health is your wealth always have been always will be your health is your wealth right so, that nationality, and they they uh, use naturalization interchangeably with nationality. But when I read the definition of national, you're gonna see why a natural a naturalized citizen can never have the same. Uh, uh, shouldn't, should I say, be viewed as someone with the same uh, say so as a national. So, according to the Vangie, quote unquote, nationality is also used as opposed to territoriality for the person of uh, distinguishing the case of a nation having no national territory like us and like the quote unquote Jews that we know of today that's not the Jews for real but you know they was at one time in the area where you know, they didn't have their own territory because, you know, they was in other people's territory. Now, what makes us different from them is we have other people that's in our territory that has ceded our land unlawfully that uh acting as if they have authority to be the nationals when in fact they second class citizens in other words they regulate the real de jour if so jour sub more subjects the brothers and sisters that's coming from the Caribbean and coming from South uh, America and Central America, they asking these folks for uh, green cards and making them go through the immunization process. When truth of the matter is, it should be Europeans because this is America. This this is those folks' land. We shouldn't have no problem traveling to Central and South America in the islands, nor should they have problems coming here. And if you really pay attention, if you understood from the movie Scarface, when you saw the Cubans, where Castro put all the Cubans on the boat and just sent them here, 
That's because Castro nat nationalized Cuba and said, hey, them people have a right to their inland. I don't want them here. I want to send them on an inland. Guess what? By Cuba being nationalized, they couldn't send them people back. So what they did, set up and went through the motions and, hey, we got to put them in a, a concentration camp here, but eventually we got to let them in. So just so for whoever watching, so they don't just catch on that, you know, what Castro did. But nonetheless, that's how things work. So, and a national note, let me go. And a national note. National is pertaining or relating to a nation as a whole, commonly applied in American law to the institution, which it shouldn't be, laws or affairs of the United States, quote unquote, or its government as opposed to those of the several states. The term national, quote unquote, listen closely to this part. The term national, quote unquote, as used in the phrase national of the United States, quote unquote, is broader than the term citizen. So if, if a national of the United States is broader than being a citizen of the United States. Why are there they persistent in in asking people, or why are they teaching people that they are U.S. citizens? Why do they ask people, "Are you a U.S. citizen?" If they can have something that's even more than that. Understand what I'm saying? If somebody really was for you and they wanted you to have the most abundant, they're not going to place you, uh, put you in second. From reading this law dictionary definition, it, it tells you that a U.S. national is broader than a U.S. citizen. But in our day and age, in this society, they promote you being a U.S. citizen. And I just want to know why is that if I'm reading a law dictionary that's telling me that they have something that I could be that's even more solidified than a U.S. citizen. I could be even more than that. Why they don't want me to be more than that? I think that's a question that if you can answer that, you probably, you might just can see the, the trees through the forest or the forest through the trees, however the hell that shit go. <laughs> but the term national as used in the phrase national of the United States is broader than the term citizen. So, a national is what you are, Moors, and is what you want to be. You are national, you are American national, and a Moroccan subject. You are Moorish and American. Not because you were in the Moorish Science Temple of America, neither, but you are a dark skinned person that's aboriginal to this landmass. That's what make you a Morris American. And let's get that straight. <laughs> yeah, they ain't. So, I finished reading this. It said, established, I mean, it was established by the, the Convention of Madrid, concluded July 3rd, 1880. 
as follows. Article 15. Any subject of Morocco who has been naturalized in a foreign country and who shall return to Morocco, this will nationality come in. And when you proclaim your nationality and you do your name change and declaration and stuff like that, this here is, is key for you to understand because after you do that, you have no further obligation to the Union State Society, right? So they're telling you that after, you see, any subject of Morocco who has been naturalized in a foreign country and who shall return to Morocco shall, after having remained for a length of time equal to that which shall have been regularly necessary for him to obtain such naturalization, choose between entire submission to the laws of the empire and the obligation to quit Morocco unless it shall be proved, proved that his naturalization in the foreign country was obtained with the consent of the government of Morocco. Foreign naturalization there, here therefore acquired by subjects of Morocco according to the rules established by the laws of each country shall be continued to the helm at regards as its efforts without any restriction. The above ruling has never yet been acted upon and should this at any time be contemplated seriously a large number of naturalized people, American and other residing in Morocco, would be affected thereby. <laughs> they letting y'all more know, man, if y'all nationalize, if y'all nationalize, that means if they want to keep you as a U.S. citizen, that would mean that they had to do it with the permission of the Moroccan Empire. That means they had to have a, 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 a correspondence. They let you know if you want to go back to Morocco, you go back. You free to go back. And the, the burden of proof would be on them to say that, hey, we got paperwork from y'all saying that we can naturalize them here and make them U.S. citizens. And they not going to have that. They can't get that. They can't get that. Because that means the Moroccan Empire had to do what's necessary and contact you to see if you naturalized or you gave up your nationalization nationality to be a U.S. citizen, which a lot of us did, but you know what I'm saying, it's null and void because they didn't disclose the legal ramifications, you know. It wasn't full disclosure when they was making us U.S. citizens. And then, like I said, 13 amendments say we can never be U.S. citizens. So it was fraud upon his, like, color of law to try to make us. It's feudal law even trying to make us U.S. citizens, right? So then it came back and said, foreign naturalization heretofore acquired by, by subjects of Morocco according to the rules established by the laws of each country shall be continued. Oh, I already read that. The above ruling, I read that too. I read that too. So I'm on four and five. Residence in foreign parts does not affect the na nationality of more subjects. So just because you in some foreign part, it don't affect your nationality. And the Morris government has no means of protecting this subject permanently residing in other countries with the exception of a so-called Moorish, and they say so-called 
Morris Consul at Gibraltar and a Morris agent at Cairo, Egypt. I am, etc. Hoffman Phillips. So, hopefully, we understand that Morris only is saying Morris only lost their nationality by being naturalized naturalized so with that being said all of these temples that's naturalizing people instead of nationalizing people they are helping you lose your nationality because they said Moors lost their nationality only, only by, where is it, right here, only, why they say Moors suddenly lost their nationality? Why they say that? Nah. Let me see if I can get out of here. I don't want to read. But this is why they say Moors only lost their nationality by being naturalized. naturalized. Right? So when more see naturalized, they should run as far as possible away from that term. Peace and love, Morris. <laughs>